Okay, so range two. Come back in here with some blue. Okay, range two. Uh, that was seven milliamps, I believe. Let's make sure. Yep, seven milliamps. So I'm just going to come in from one meter lead to the other, doing a parallel or a vertical redraw. Okay, this time let's let's look at that circuit just so you know what the heck I'm doing. So this time um, we're looking at this path, and then we split that way, split that way, come back together. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be the top node now. I'm on range two. So practice doing those redraws on your own. But look at mine if you need the reference. Okay, but now, whoops, get some Purdue back on here. Okay, now we've got R1 over here, if you noticed. That meter still in that branch. Okay, and now we've only got R2, which we don't know, and R3 over here, which we don't know. Okay, so there's my range two redraw, seven milliamps, and then here's my other uh, meter lead. Let's just look at the currents. So I've got seven milliamps coming in, seven milliamps going out. Okay, so inside here, I've got I meter, which is one milliamp. Okay, R meter was one K ohm, right? So, so this branch is always going to be at full scale deflection one milliamp. Okay, so one milliamp goes that way, and then that way. So the rest goes that way, and that way, and that way. All right. So let's just solve for that. I shunt two, let's call it, let's label it. I meter doesn't change. I shunt two equals I range two minus I meter. Okay, so I S two equals seven milliamps minus one milliamp. I S two equals six milliamps for this circuit to have to create to design for a range a second range of seven milliamps all right <clears throat> so let's look at some stuff so we know that we remember we remember in case we need it that vm we found to be one volt um, we remember the shunt total Resistance was RST equals R1 plus R2 plus R3, and we did find that, and it was 500 ohms. If my memory is working. All right, so I think that's what we found and what we realized from the previous um, uh, redraw and solving this circuit. So let's look add some stuff here. Um, let's do a voltage equation. And what do I mean by that? Well, st we've still got a, a parallel network, so the second redraw is still just generally a parallel network, so one branch, so B1, is going to equal the voltage of B2, so let's just state that. So VB1 equals VB2 branch one equals branch two's voltage. Just a parallel rule. Fall back on your rules and just remember. Okay, so let's think about what's in those branches. Well, let's just expand that term a little bit. Well, in branch one, I've got VR2 plus VR3. Branch two, I've got VR1 plus V meter, all right? Well, that's good. Okay, so now I can I can expand that and even more and put it in terms of I times R. Okay, so let me just rewrite it over here and see if I got a little bit more room over here. 
So V R two plus V R three equals V R one plus V M. So I'm just the sum of my voltages on branch one is going to equal the sum of my voltages on branch two. Okay, let's expand it into um, into terms of I times R, which is just currents again, or voltages again, I'm sorry. So V R1 and R3 C I S2. Okay, so I S2 this time times R2 plus I S2 times R3 equals I meter times R1 and V meter can can stay the same but I'll go ahead and show that it is just IM times RM alright so that's really good okay well let's uh, let's factor these things out and make it look nice so let's I S2 R2 plus R3 equals IM R1 plus R M. So now I kind of know um, very simply, you know, what my relationships are as far as current and resistance for each branch. Now let's look at um, <clears throat> let's look at the that this equation. So we know I S two. We don't know R three. We don't know R two. We know I meter. We don't know R one. We did solve, or we do know. The given for uh, our meter, that's one kilo ohm, as shown over on the other side. Um, but we have three unknowns, and basically, you know, this this uh, this little equation here. Um, but what we do know is the relationship of these resistors, and we can play around with that. So as long as you don't break the rules, you can do whatever you want with with. Uh, the math and, and let's see what happens. So if I come in here um, and let's let me write my R1 or RST actually equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. Okay, well that's nice. What why am I doing that? Well so I've got an unknown R1, an unknown R3, and an unknown R2. If I can find um, an expression or an equation that I know to be true <clears throat> that equals you know something um, my goal here would be to minimize my unknowns so if I can find um, an expression that you know contains one of my unknowns and eliminates one or more of my unknowns my other unknowns then then I can actually start to substitute and get down and, and minimize my unknown variables. So let's just see what I can do. And bear with me on this one. So if I just say, you know, in this branch, I mean, you can look at the picture. I've got R2 and R3, right? So if I just start playing around with, with the way the picture looks, so let's subtract R1 from both sides. So I know the remaining resistance in branch one is, I've, I've taken R1 out of it. Well, let's just see what happens. Okay, so RS total minus R1 equals R2 plus R3. So I've maintained, you know, the relationship. So that that expression is known to be true. And look what look what I can see now. See if you can see it before I point it out. So I've got this R1 R2 plus R3 equals RS total minus R1. Well, sure enough. Here's an here's an unknown R1. Here's something I do know, and then on the other side I just have two unknowns, right? Well, if you look back at this equation, here's my two unknowns that I can replace or substitute with a known RST minus R1. Okay, now I've got I would that'll leave me with only one unknown in my equation which you know that makes me feel happy cuz i can actually get somewhere so let's go ahead and do that okay i'm going to go back to green okay so now i'll just substitute in rewrite and substitute in my equivalent expression which is 
RST minus R1 equals I meter R1 plus RM. So that side's going to stay the same. All right. Okay. So now I know shunt two's current. I know RS total. I don't know R1. I know my meter current. Don't know R1. And I know my meter's resistance. So the only unknown I have is R1. I'm going to solve for it. So I'm just first going to distribute my terms. Okay, let's find that. So I S2 times RST minus I S2 R1 equals, I'll do it over here too, I M R1 I M R M. Okay, got to get my R1 terms on the same side. So I've got my I S2 times R shunt total minus I M R M equals I M R1 plus whoa I S total or I S2 sorry times R1. Okay. Now we're now we're getting somewhere. So I've got all my R1 terms uh, by themselves. Let's rewrite this. I S2 times R S T minus I M R M equals now I can factor out an R1 R1 I M plus I S2. Okay, now I've all I have to do now to solve for R1 is divide both sides by R1. Okay, which leads me with R1 is going to equal I S2 R times R S T minus I M R M over okay and that's all over R1 right did I do it right actually no I didn't <laughs> I I'm trying to solve for R1 okay so this actually should have been divide both sides by I M plus I S2 Okay. All right. Pull up. Quick recovery. So now it is. This it will be R1. I M plus I S2. Now you could plug in all your numbers right now and solve for R1. Um, interestingly, I S2 times R shunt total minus I M R M. Well, that's V meter. And then. So look up here. So I shunt two, or basically knowing this equation, if I add my meter current plus my shunt current, I'm back to the range current. This is V meter. Just to show it a little bit cleaner, R1 equals I S2 times the R shunt total minus V meter over I range, let's write that a little bit cleaner, I range two. Okay, now I can plug in some numbers. R1 equals uh, six milliamps times 500 ohms, that's gonna be a voltage, um, minus one volt, and that's all over seven milliamps, okay? All right, well, let's solve for that thing. So this current times resistance is gonna be a voltage. Let's, uh, let's wake up the old calculator. All right, let's see where that gets us. So right in the way, but here we go. So I'm just gonna 
six milliamps times 500. All right, if I did that right, that's, you know, that's our, get, see if I can get some room here without making a crazy move here. Oh, let's just write small. R1 equals three volts minus one volt over seven milliamps. So R1 equals two volts over seven milliamps. Okay, so R1 equals, let's bring the calculator back. Okay, so three minus two, or three minus one is two, so, oh boy. Two divided by seven e to the negative third gives me an R1 of 285.7. 285.7 ohms for R1. Okay, so we're going to want to remember that number. Okay, so we we want to remember this number. So if I did all my math steps correctly, that's that should be my R1's resistance. All right, now um, there are some double check steps I could do here. Um, We'll see how that goes. I'm just gonna go ahead and show that at the end, but uh, I'm gonna roll with this resistance for now and go ahead and do my range three redraw.